Hey y'all, Chelsea and Danny here. Enjoy this episode of Today's Homeowner here on YouTube. This week, we're renovating an old bath in this home for the new owners. Today's Homeowner with Danny Lipford, the voice of home improvement, with projects, tips, and ideas to help you improve your home. Hey, I'm glad you're with us. Now, this home is around 30 years old. It's in a well-established neighborhood and has just about everything that the new owners wanted in a home except a modern bathroom. Now, the existing bathroom is very out of date and really needed some help, and it's simply not what the owners wanted to see every morning. Now, we're in the beginning stages of the renovation that will not only update the bathroom, but also take care of a few space problems that exist within the bathroom. Now, this is a busy show, so stay with us. The new owners of this home are doing quite a few little cosmetic things throughout the house, including installing some new flooring, removing the wallpaper, but our focus is on the master bathroom. Now, it's kind of desirable to a lot of homeowners to have the bedroom and bathroom downstairs so that later years, if they have a little trouble getting up and down the stairs, it won't be a problem here. It's really laid out pretty nicely right off the center part of the house. You have the master bedroom here and the master bathroom here. Now, the reason that doorway is here is because this was the only bathroom on the lower level of this house so it had to be not only the master bathroom but also the guest bathroom not an ideal situation but with the renovation we're taking care of that Originally, to gain access to the bathroom from the master bedroom, you had to go down a long hallway and turn to get into the bathroom that really needed some updating. Apparently, the original owner of this house was fairly fond of avocado green because it was everywhere. The walls, the floors, the toilet, and the sink. And if the color palette didn't give away the age of the house, the size of this bath would have. Basically, it was just a narrow hallway with toilet and vanity on one side and a tub-shower combo on the other. Now, demolition is always fun, but the guys kind of fought over who would take out the gorgeous green tub enclosure. The odd little closets and hallways were also gutted to the studs like the bathroom, and soon we were busting up the concrete subfloor to rearrange all the plumbing fixtures. Next, we began laying out the locations for the new walls and nailing them in place. Now this area will also have a number of angled walls and pocket doors, so the guys took their time to get them right. At this point, we've completed almost all of the construction of the new walls, which will allow me to kind of take you through the new bathroom layout and show you how it's worked out so well. Now the layout calls for both his and her closets, this being his, and this being hers. Seems to always work out that way, doesn't it? Now the hallway here to bring you from the bedroom into the bathroom come right down the middle and along the way we'll have a vanity and sink and cabinets over on this side. Then back in this corner we're creating a large custom shower. Now a lot of homeowners have decided not to put in tubs in their master baths for several reasons. One, it saves you a lot of money and it saves you a lot of space and people realize they just don't use their tubs very much. So these homeowners have just made the decision that a large custom shower will be fine with them and if they want a tub bath they can use one of the other bathrooms in the house. Over on this side we have our water closet area where our toilet will be positioned and just behind that is the powder room that will have access off of the hallway of the doorway we looked at earlier. Now these homeowners made a wise decision to very early on use a bathroom designer to help them design this fairly complicated layout. Now you may know exactly what you want in the bathroom that you're remodeling, but it takes a little expertise to make sure that it all flows together properly. The challenges of designing bathroom, first and foremost, is to get everything in that the client wants in the space that we have allotted. Then we have to make sure, because there's a lot of planning and information that you have to have. You just can't say, I'm going to put a shower there, or I'm going to put a tub there. There are so many codes and regulations and specifications that we have to incorporate, and it's our job to know those, to keep up with them, and to have the literature available to do that. So we take the needs, the space, the budget, and we try to make all of it fit in along with the codes, uh, make it happen. There are so many details in a bathroom renovation like this. Not only do we have to make sure all of the walls are laid out properly, we have a lot of electrical work, 
air conditioning work, and plumbing work to deal with. There's a lot of things to be done here, so don't go anywhere. You might miss something. It's time for this week's Simple Solution from home repair expert, Joe Truini. This week, Joe has some great insulation tips. Well, the first thing, Danny, is I want to mention whenever you're working with fiberglass insulation, it's always a good idea to wear a long sleeve shirt, long pants, eye goggles, and a dust mask and gloves when laying it out just to keep those irritating glass fibers off of your bare skin. And when you're in an attic like this, make sure you don't step through the ceiling. Another good tip. Right? <laughs> now this, this trick has to do with cutting insulation and cutting it squarely and accurately. And because the insulation is really thick and makes it sometimes difficult to cut with a utility knife, which is what most people use, but you see this blade's only about an inch or so long. What I prefer to use instead is this utility knife that has a special snap-off blade. And the idea is you can snap them off as they get dull, but if you extend it all the way out and lock it, you can end up with like a three or four inch long blade, which makes it really easy to cut through even really thick bats like this. Now the other trick is to use a straight edge. This is an old two by four, but you can use any piece of wood, even plywood would work, and just lay it across there. I like kneeling on one end, which, which really compresses the insulation, and press down. Again, hold it nice and square. Then just draw the knife blade right through there. You can see how cleanly that cuts through. Yeah. And it's important that it's cut very accurately because you want to make sure when you're installing it, it's nice and tight to really maximize the coverage that you'll have with the insulation, just like that. Our drywall finishers are busy applying the first coat of joint compound and tape on the patches and some of the wall joints. This is the first step in really getting these walls looking great. Now the fact that we're at this point already with sheetrock on the walls means a lot of work took place over the last few days. The plumber had to route lots of water and drain lines through the new walls and the floor trenches in the slab before the holes could be filled in with concrete. There were also lots of air and heat ducts to be routed overhead. Now between the plumber, the electrician, and the ventilation contractor, most of the walls and ceiling cavities in this bathroom were filled up. For the remaining untouched spaces, we added plenty of insulation not just for the outside walls, but for the inside ones as well. The insulation will help deaden some of the noise transfer from the bath to other rooms. The next chore was hanging the drywall boards that will be the skin of these walls. The drywall really divides up the area and defines the new spaces. The new powder room, the front vanity area, and the walk-in closet. One area of the bathroom that still looks very unfinished is our large custom shower. The reason for this is we have no walls here like we have everywhere else. Now we'll be installing on these walls a half inch cement backer board instead of drywall. We'll still be putting the insulation in the walls, but the backer board will serve as a good base for our ceramic tile to be installed in just a few days. Now we'll be installing ceramic here as well as on the floor of this shower, which will take some careful coordination between our plumbing contractor and the ceramic tile installers. Our plumber will be in first to install a vinyl liner that will go on the floor as well as a short distance up on the wall. Then the ceramic tile installer will come in with a grout bed, which will be a mixture of mortar, sand, and cement. That will allow him to slope the bottom of this, the pan, to the drain itself, and then the ceramic will be installed over that. That way we can ensure there won't be any leaks at any time around any of the adjacent walls. Now, you know, ceramic tile is something that's been a constant presence in bathrooms for many, many years. Sometimes people use it just on the floors, sometimes, like in this case, both on the floor as well as all of the walls. Now, it's not easy picking out ceramic because there's so much to choose from. Cindy, now how do you help homeowners make the right decision with all the ceramic that's available? Well, first of all, Danny, we have to ask them which areas of the house that the ceramic's going in. And do they want a dressy tile or more of a casual look, the different textures? There's just so many things that we have to take into account. Yeah, you know, with the different tiles with um, some having patterns on them versus a solid type of tile as a decision. And also the edges, a lot of them are very straight edges. Others have kind of a ripple edge to it. So I know that all that plays into it. Also, whether to go with porcelain or regular ceramic, uh, what's the difference and what do you prefer? Well, I prefer the porcelain tile. The color is all the way through on the porcelain tiles versus the ceramic is just a clay backing. So if you chip the tile, you're liable to see the red clay. And also when you're working in a bathroom like we're working in, where you have a lot of outside corners, it's hard to make that look very good. It is. The bath project we're working on now, we used all porcelain tiles, which had 
uh, some wonderful bullnose pieces that have the finished edge that we can put on the tiles. Oh, that'll that'll help a lot when you when you line that up to cover up that edge. Yeah, that'll be that'll be great. Now, working with all these different sizes within the same room, um, that's got to really flow together, or it really got to look bad. Right. We used a lot of different tiles here, different manufacturers. We put the 18 inch on the diagonal on the bathroom floor. That and always we, that always looks good. Oh, it made the bathroom look so much bigger. Uh -huh. And then we did the 13 inch actually on the diagonal in the shower walls with the bull nose worked in a pretty border, and then we used the three by three mosaics on the shower floor. I guess that's important too, just for pure texture on the bottom of the shower, having that is a little better, and I guess easier to work with than the actual um, larger tiles. Oh yes, we have to uh, slope the tile down to the drain so that it drains well, and uh, just put everything together, and just a lot of fun. Well, we're about to start putting all these elements together in this bathroom right after our best new product. Let's join Danny at the Home Center to check out this week's best new product. Brought to you by the Home Depot. How could you improve on the design of a traditional garden tool like a post hole digger? First of all, look at some of the problems associated with this tool. If you've used it at all, you know that you can very easily bang your knuckles together. That's not a lot of fun when you have a lot of post holes to dig. Another problem is that you're limited on how deep you can go with a traditional post hole digger because you're limited at the size of the hole in the spreading of the handles that you have to do in order to grasp the dirt. So, let me show you how Fiskars has addressed these problems with a complete redesign of the post hole digger itself. And this thing looks pretty wild. The handles themselves right down the middle of the tool. Then your pivot point is a little higher than normal here so that it, it um, creates less interference in the hole itself. And, and the top handles here are offset to where you're not having to worry about those knuckles banging together. Now another thing that's good about this is that it will allow you to dig holes a lot deeper than normal because of the offset handles. Now you can see by the little diagram here that a traditional post hole digger will only go down just so far because of the spread of the handles. Here with this one being offset you can go down an additional depth which could be very important if you're trying to stabilize a post or you have a particular situation where you'll have a lot of pressure on a post. Now cost wise these will cost a little bit more than, than this type of post hole digger and about the same as the more commercial grade type diggers. But, you know, if you have a lot of holes to dig or particularly ones that need to be nice and deep, this is the way to go. We are really moving along on this bathroom. Even our doors are in. Cabinet man made it out and installed one of our vanities here and a very unique cabinet in this corner that actually has little adjustable shelves, a little nook right in here. It'll be real convenient and even a row of drawers all the way down. That's a great way of utilizing a corner like this. Also, we have the other vanity here that's uh, actually a little taller than many vanities. This is a very common request that we get from homeowners now. Instead of 32 inches, We've actually gone up to right at 36 inches with this vanity. Not only is it a little more comfortable to use if you're of average height, it also gives you a little more storage space, which is always handy. Now, over the last few days, our ceramic installer also has completed all of the floor tiles that are 18 inch by 18 inch ceramic. And right now he's focusing on quite a job over here with the custom shower that's being installed. Now before we got to this point, a lot of things took place in preparation of the wall tiles by finishing out the pan itself. First we used a orange vinyl liner that wrapped the whole area. Then we put in our cement backer board around the perimeter of the shower. Then came back with a mixed up grout and grouted in the whole pan here on the floor and then sloped it to where it would slope right in to the drain. Later on, after he finishes the walls, he'll start putting in uh, the ceramic floor itself. Now the ceramic, as you can see, is a great looking design with a mosaic band pattern around here and then you can see the spacers that he's using to keep all of the grout joints nice and consistent. Now, ceramic like this is fairly easy to install nowadays because it comes in mats like this. You can see one of the bands and then the decorative medallion in the middle. And even though this speeds it up a little bit, there's still a lot involved in a shower like this. The layout is what makes an accent band like this really work. In this case, it was planned to land nicely between the two rows of body sprays. Layout is also important for the granite countertops that will soon go in. The stone fabricator makes a template with wood strips and hot glue to replicate the odd angles on complicated pieces with specific notes for the placement of sink cutouts and other details. 
These templates plus measurements and drawings will ensure that the tops fit when they arrive out on the job site. Meanwhile, our tile setter, Tim, is grouting the tiles on the shower walls and wiping them clean to complete the shower and all of his work on this project. Within a few days, the stone fabricator is back with the completed tops, which he secures to the cabinets using caulk and epoxy. The backsplashes are cut to fit on site so that they fit tightly against the walls to protect them from moisture and to conceal any gaps. With the tile and vanities complete, the plumber can return to trim out the fixtures in the bathroom. It may seem like you would need an instruction book to operate a shower like this, but really it's fairly simple. You have your main valve here for the hot and cold water. Then you have several different diverter valves to divert it to the various shower heads. Now for the shower head, we have the main one here. We have a handheld shower over in the corner, which is a great idea for cleaning a large shower like this, as well as using it in the operation of the shower. Then you have two heads here two more heads over here, and then the two additional ones here make for a total of eight different shower heads. I'm sure this will be quite a shower experience for the homeowners once they move in. Now, one thing that this plumbing fixture manufacturer does, it makes it a lot easier when you're remodeling a bathroom, is that they actually produce accessories that go right along with matching the finish of any of your plumbing fixtures. Now that can be a real challenge for a lot of homeowners when they're selecting their plumbing fixtures to then have to go somewhere else and select towel rods and towel rings, toilet paper holders. Here you can select them all at the same time and be ensured that everything will match. Now also our enclosure went in just the other day and I always like using the clear glass like this both for the clear panels, the fixed panels as well as the operable doors. So we're getting very close to completing this bathroom and after our around the yard segment I'll give you the tour of the finished product. Let's head outside for around the yard with lawn and garden expert Trisha Craven Worley brought to you by Timber Tech Composite Decking. Danny, you're really doing that the hard way. Okay, what do you have now? Well, what I have here is an old uh, TV tray stand. What happened to the top? Well, it broke. <laughs> but uh, what I did is I put these strings on here to help create the frame again that's uh, missing. And, you know, another way you can do it is if you, a lot of people have those old aluminum stands. Right, right. And right. you can really dig those or plant them into the ground. makes it really stable. Okay, so you're doing a little recycling, I can see. Exactly. <laughs> always a good idea. So what I've done is just take the bag and uh, put it over this stand. You can just create the whole frame for it. Exactly. Okay. So let's All go right. to it. Okay. I can use both hands now instead of just the one on my method. Both hands. And so it's uh, twice as fast. And what even saves a whole lot more time is if you take a rake or those rake claws, uh -huh. you really uh, save a lot of time. I can see. And then I guess um, you're able to move this around the yard fairly easy because they're never very heavy. Exactly. You can move the whole thing. And then when you're done, you just take the bag and take it off to your compost pile or however you're going to dispose of it. You can fold up the tray mm -hmm. and uh, store it in your tool shed. Well, that's a great idea. I hope you'll stay around and kind of help me finish of up here. Of course. <laughs> Our homeowners have finally moved in and they're delighted with their new master bathroom. It's a far cry from what it looked like before. Not only was the old master bath an unattractive study in avocado, but it also had to serve as the guest bath. The old closets were poorly laid out and very inefficient, so a lot of space was wasted. In the new plan, we created a separate half bath for the guest off the hallway. In the bedroom, we added a small closet for the man of the house, and in the new master bath, a larger walk-in closet for her with custom shelving and lots of hanging space. The bath itself has two separate vanities, one in the entry and the other in the back adjacent to the oversized custom shower. The beautiful ceramic and multiple shower heads will no doubt make this shower a popular destination. And there are plenty of cabinets tucked in here and there to maximize every inch of the space. We were able to pack a lot into this bathroom because a good bit of time was spent by the owners and designers making sure they got just the kind of bathroom they wanted. Now that's a good thing to keep in mind when you're planning your next bathroom renovation. I'm Danny Lipford. We'll see you next week. Thanks for watching this episode of Today's Homeowner. And don't forget to like, comment, and hit the bell icon so that you'll be notified of new videos. And be sure to click around and watch some more videos while you're here.